Hi there, Chris Chapman in the Camp, Moto Legends. Something a little bit different this time around. We're currently in July and that's halfway through the year and we take the view that we're not going to be receiving many more new products this season. So we're taking the opportunity to look at some of our favourite products on the market. We might term this the best products on the market, but it is true we don't do all of the brands that are out there, but we do search out the very best products. So I think some of the products we're going to talk about and some of the categories we're going to be talking about, you can be sure that or can be confident that we have some of the best products available. We're going to be talking about 24 products in total, so we're going to do 12 today. We're going to do another 12 in about a week's time. But let's go. Let's look at some of our favorite products, some of the best products money can buy. This is the Halvarsons Lispig, and that's our favorite summer waterproof or lightweight waterproof motorcycle jacket. Jackets like this, you wouldn't wear if you were undertaking a long daily commute. I suppose if you had a 10 to 15 minute commute, then it might be up to the job, but it's not a serious commuting jacket, nor is it the kind of jacket that you would wear if you're going off on a long European tour. Rather, it's the kind of jacket that you'd put on if you were popping out to the shops and going to pick up the papers, or if you're going out on a Sunday morning to go and get a bacon sandwich and a cup of coffee. These kinds of jackets can be waterproof in two ways. They can either have a membrane or a waterproof coating. But for most people, I would contend such jackets might be considered to be a second jacket. Some people call these jackets hallway jackets. In other words, you hang them up in the hallway, you want to go out, but you don't want to put on all the heavy gear. So you just grab a jacket like this and, and pop out. There are lots of similar jackets on the market, but our favorite is clearly this one. It's the Helvarsons Lisvik, as I've mentioned. It's a lightweight jacket. It's got a membrane. It's got a drop line of membrane. It doesn't come with a thermal, but that's not a problem as far as we're concerned. If it's cold, you just put on something underneath. But what distinguishes this jacket from other jackets like it is that it has a huge amount of venting. You've got these vents here on the chest. You've got these long vents that go up and down the arms, and you have two exhaust vents behind the shoulders. Unfortunately, it comes with the slightly clunky old-fashioned level one armor that Alvarsons has used in the past. They've now brought out a new level two armor that's lovely and soft and to tell the truth in a in the blink of an eye if I was going to buy this jacket I would upgrade it to the level two armor. It's going to make it safer to wear but also it's going to make it a much more comfortable jacket. But even though it's got the level one armor this jacket is still rated at the double A level and there are jackets out there that are six times the price of this jacket, textile jackets that are six times the price that are still only AA or sometimes A rated. So you're not trading anything off in safety, even though this is not an expensive jacket. We think therefore that this is the perfect lightweight jacket. And however an experienced motorcyclist you are, have in mind however many miles you do, everyone will find a use for a jacket like this at some point. But if you're someone who's brand new to biking and you're not sure what to buy, or let's say you're working on a very tight budget, then the Lispic is also a brilliant option, especially when you consider that the price is just £180. And at that price, frankly, it's unbeatable. Our favourite flip lid helmet is still the venerable Shuey Neotic 2. Now, earlier this year, Schubert launched the much anticipated C5. And from what we've seen, it looks as though it's going to be a very worthy competitor. But it's only been in the market for six months and it's still somewhat unproven. We also haven't had in yet any of the cheap pads and headlinings that are going to allow us to do a custom fit in the way that we already can on the Neotech. By contrast to the C5, the Neotech is well proven. It's been on the market for a number of years. We know that bits don't fall off the helmet. It's reliable. Most owners who have a Neotech 2 seem to love it. When we sell a Neotech 2 here in the shop, most customers never come back with it. So to us, that's very reassuring. As a helmet, it's supremely comfortable. Most people, when they put the Neotech 2 on, as opposed to any other helmet, they just go, oh, that's really nice. And that's not a reason on its own right, or in its own right to buy a helmet, but I think Shui just understands how to make a helmet a nice place to do business in. The pads and linings are available for the Neotech 2 in nearly all sizes, so we can put different cheap pads, thicker or thinner cheap pads, thicker or thinner head lining, so we really can do a near customized fit on this helmet. The Neotech 2 is as quiet pretty much as any helmet out there. It's got good venting, twin venting. We've got a vent here on the 
brown event here on the chin. You've got a pin lock 120, a standard. You've got a drop down sun visor. It's got semi integrated comms, and until now, the comms that has gone with this helmet has been the SRL2. It's been a great system, but very recently, a new one that a new one has come out that offers mesh, that's called the SRL Mesh. Also comes with Harman Kardon speakers and a Harman Kardon microphone. So if you're someone who really loves music or you need to talk to people or want to talk to people on mesh, then the new comms is the one to go for. Some people I've got to say don't really like flip lids. And my view is, if you don't, get over yourself. Personally, we don't see any downside to a flip lid. Our favorite wax cotton jacket is this jacket. It's the Bellstaff Crosby. Although we here at Motor Legends are quite a technical company these days, we still cater for the leisure rider who wants to occasionally put on a bit of style. And for many, that is going to mean wearing something in wax cotton. We do wax cotton jackets from a number of manufacturers, Riescher, the Belgian company Riescher, the French company Helston's, the German company Held, and of course, Bellstaff, which is long last back in British hands. Most accept that Bellstaff does the best wax cotton. Indeed, everyone else, let's face it, just copies Bellstaff. And at times that means going right down to copying the logo here, the Phoenix logo on the left sleeve. Bellstaff jackets are the best made. They're the best quality jackets. They're the most wearable, the most comfortable, the most waterproof, the most stylish. There are three main styles within the Bellstaff range. There's the shorter jacket, a mid-length jacket, and a long jacket. The short jacket is the Mojave jacket, sometimes known as the Brooklands. The mid-length jacket, in other words, this jacket, is the Crosby. The longer jacket is known as the Trial Master. Now, the Mojave, the shorter jacket, can at times, depending on your stature, your height, can be too short. When you're sat on the bike, leant forward a little bit, it can leave skin exposed between the top of the jean line, as it were, and the bottom hem of the jacket. That's going to leave the back exposed if you have an accident, but it's also not great in the rain because it means that water's going to come down and can run into the trousers. The longer Trial Master has a fiddly central belt. And also that jacket can be so long that, certainly if you're my height, it makes you look as though someone's cut your legs off. But it means that when you're sat on the bike, you're sat on the tail. It's not such an easy jacket to wear. The best length of all three lengths is the mid-length jacket in our view. This is the Crosby. It's, in long, it's long enough to cover the belt line, so there's no issue in terms of safety and waterproofing, but it's not so long that it's an issue wearing it on the bike. It's not fiddly, it's not difficult to live with. In the Crosby, there's no thermal lining, so it's a reasonably light wax cotton jacket. It's an easy to live with, easy to wear jacket. It's even quite a cool jacket, certainly much cooler to wear than the Trial Master. It comes with D3O in the shoulders, in the elbows. There's a pocket for a back protector, as you would expect. We think it's the best wax cotton from Bell Staff, or indeed, from anybody else. Our favorite retro helmet is this helmet. It's the Arai Rapide. When it comes to most retro helmets, we here at Moto Legends are pretty dismissive of them. Most of them in our view are just toys. They may look the part, they may have these lovely round shells, lovely interiors, graphics on the outside and so on, but they are noisy. They don't keep the rain out because they don't have things like seals around the visor. Most of them have absolutely no venting. I don't think I've seen a single one that comes with a proper pinlock visor, which obviously is important if you want to stop misting up. Many of them, I think, are also questionable from a pure safety and protection standpoint. There are only two serious retro helmets on the market. By serious, I mean helmets that are maybe retro looking, but have modern features and facilities. And those two helmets are the Shui Glamster and the Arai Rapide. They are both great helmets. The Shui is lighter, smaller, and perhaps has a more traditional retro look because it's got a much smoother chin bar than the more aggressive nose here on the Arai. The Arai, because it's an Arai, is a little bit bigger and heavier than the Shui. An Arai is always bigger and heavier than most helmets because they use a much thicker shell. Now, that thicker shell is great in some contexts, but it doesn't absorb energy particularly well. So you have to have an even thicker EPS liner in an Arai. And what that means is Arai's tend to be a little bit larger. But when I had my recent coming together with the tarmac, wearing this, my Arai Rapide, I was very impressed with the way it stood up. So perhaps that has given me uh, a slight fondness for the Arai Rapide. It may well be the case that the Glamster would have done equally well if I'd been wearing that. But the Arai impressed me and performed as well as one would ever expect an 
our rights to perform. There is no helmet that is safer. So this is not, in our view, just a retro helmet. It's a modern helmet in every sense, just with retro looks. We quite like this more aggressive nose. I think it's a bolder design statement than the slightly more pastiche-like Glamster. We also think that our eye a little bit bolder with the graphics. I don't think Shui have tried very hard on their graphics. As with most our eyes and pretty much all Shui's, we can change the cheek pads and the headliners to get a perfect fit. Okay, there's no drop down visor on this helmet, but that's the same with the Shui Glamster. And whilst we don't agree with this, the people who are making or who are designing retro helmets take the view that because back in the day, back in the 80s or 70s or 90s, whatever, because back in the day you couldn't get a drop down visor, they're not going to fit helmets like this with a drop down visor. We think it's a shame, but so be it. Overall, it's a close call. I think both the Glamster and the Rapide are great helmets, but we marginally prefer the Rapide. Personally, all I need to do now is work out what my um, next colorway is. <clears throat> For many years, we were and indeed have been of the view that the Halvarsons Veen jacket and its matching pant represented the best drop liner suit that money could buy. It's still a great outfit, but early this year, Rucker came out with this suit and it's called the Comfo R. It's a classic, albeit rather boring looking Rucker two-piece suit. It's got a Gore-Tex membrane and most people would concede that Gore-Tex produces a better membrane. But like the laminated Nivala, it contains stretch in the fabric. So it's incredibly comfortable to wear. It's incredibly forgiving. It only has in truth a somewhat average thermal liner and it has an average amount of venting. You just get these vents up the sides here. There's nothing on the chest, nothing on the shoulders, but Rucker reckon these vents are pretty good. Still, we would take the view that the venting is nothing more than average. But it does come with Rucker's own super large D3O protectors that I think are as good as any out there. But importantly, this is probably the most comfortable drop liner suit that you will ever wear. It comes in a large range of, it comes in a large range of sizes, including short legs and long legs. But even though it's a Rucker outfit, so one might imagine it's going to be super expensive, we think it's still relatively affordable. So the Halvarsons combo, which has been incredibly popular with us over the years, comes in at £900 once you include a back protector. The Rucker combo comes in at £250 more, so £1,150. But the Rucker suit, it has to be acknowledged, is a better suit in a number of respects. As we've said, it's got the Gore-Tex membrane. Plus, I think importantly, particularly if you're doing high mileages, you get an extra four years of warranty because with a Halvarsen suit, you get two years of warranty. With a Rucker suit, you get six years of warranty. So potentially you are spending an extra 250 pounds for an extra four years of reassurance. And if you do the maths on that, I think this makes this suit, even though it's a Rucker, makes it a bit of a bargain. Our favorite full face helmet is this, which is the Shui GTR2. First thing, I should mention, we don't sell race helmets. They're not our thing. But you should be aware that if you are tempted to spend seven, 800, 900 pounds or more on a race helmet, you're not buying anything, you're not buying or accessing higher levels of safety than you are here. In fact, in some ways you get less. It's merely that the manufacturers believe that because you're into racing, you are inclined or prepared to pay more. In our view, the two brands, Shui and Arai, sit head and shoulders above all the other helmet manufacturers. But one cannot avoid the fact that our eyes don't have things like comms, they don't come with drop down sun visors, and that's because Mr. Arai won't countenance them. And that really is why we have chosen as our favorite helmet of 2022, that's why we have chosen the GTA 2 over the similar Quantic. The two helmets have much in common. Some prefer the Arai, some prefer the Shui. They do actually have different head shapes. So the Arai is a little bit rounder, the Shui is a little bit more oval, but they're both great helmets. We can customize them both in terms of the cheek pads and the headliners. But I'm afraid we cannot ignore the weakness of the Arai over the Shui in terms of their suitability as road going helmets. And that is that whereas the Shui has a drop down sun visor, clearly the Arai doesn't. The Shui also has a better integrated comms facility. Now you can get comms for the Arai. In fact, Arai now recommend one for the Quantic, but it is clear that the comms facility is far better thought through with the Shui. You've got these panels that pull out, so there's no protuberance on the side. It's just a more sophisticated option on the Shui. And there's now a brand new 
comm system that has recently come out that enables you to have the GTO2 with a mesh facility, but also with higher quality Harman Kardon speakers. Of course, personally, as a company, we'd always go for the Neotech 2. We can't see the downsides of a flip lid, but maybe that's just us. But if you want a full face helmet for touring or commuting, then as far as we're concerned, the GTA 2 is the best there is. Motor Latin's customers won't be surprised to hear that the Marrakesh is our favorite mesh jacket, but it undersells the Marrakesh to suggest that it's just a mesh jacket. Most mesh jackets are not up to much. They have a basic nylon chassis and within that you tend to find that there are mesh panels. They might be running down the arms, normally across the chest, sometimes across the back. They do a job, but they only flow air through those areas where you've got the mesh panels. Equally, these jackets tend not to be particularly robust because if you have an accident, that mesh, there's no strength in that mesh, it's just going to rip apart. The Marrakesh is a different kettle of fish. It's woven from a thousand denier cordura. Now that's a much heavier weight of cordura than you'll find in most jackets. Even the best rucker jackets will only have a 750 or maybe an 850 denier cordura. This then has stretch woven into it to make it particularly comfortable. But importantly, air flows through every single panel. So the whole of the chest, air will run through, air can escape through the back, can come through the arms and so on. It's rated AA under EN 17092. And again, that's impressive. I don't know of any other mesh jacket that is rated AA. Bear in mind that AA is the same rating that Rucker got for their Kingsley jacket, which was made specifically for the UK police. Jacket comes fully fitted with D3O armor in the shoulders and elbows and in the back. Importantly, it is the most comfortable AA jacket you will ever wear. It is just beautiful to wear. The problem is that whilst this jacket is great in the heat because it flows the air through every panel, it reaches its level of incompetence, as it were, when the temperature drops. But with the stretch in the fabric, the Marrakesh makes a great starting point for some kind of layering system. So what we tend to do here is, when it's a wee bit chilly, we wear this, which is a windproof layer, the Zephyr, the Klim Zephyr, that will go under this. When it's really cold, we wear this. This is called the Maverick, it's a down jacket. So when you wear those two, you make this into a pretty well insulated jacket. If it rains, then you just put the Scott over the top. When you wear those four pieces together, you've got a system that is gonna allow you to travel anywhere in the world because when it's hot, you've just got the jacket. When it's cold or chilly, you've got the Zephyr on. When it's really cold, you've got the Maverick. And then when it's raining, you've got the Scott over the top. This really does give you the ultimate in terms of flexibility. And that is why the Klim Marrakesh is our favorite mesh jacket. In fact, being frank about it, it's just our favorite jacket. Our favorite open face helmet is this. It's the Shui X0. But you might protest that's not an open face helmet. And of course, you'd be right. But let me come back to this. Most open face helmets are cheap as chips. They're, I suppose you can find one from as little as 50 pounds up to 150 pounds, I'm sure you can spend more. But they are designed for the scooter market. They're not high-end protective devices. They're there to do a job just to protect the rider in an urban environment. But the truth is that we have somewhat gone off the traditional open face helmets. And that's partly because of a recent experience I had when I was riding in my RI repeat. I went down, I had an accident. I wasn't doing any more than 40 miles an hour. But when I went down, and whenever you have an accident at whatever speed, you're kind of a passenger. When it happens, you don't know what's gonna happen. You have no, no control. But I ended up sliding along the chin bar here. I've got scrapes all over the visor. And if I had been wearing an open face helmet, basically I'd have no chin. I would have been in a whole heap of pain. I would have had to have undergone, I'm sure, some kind of plastic surgery. I would have been in the hospital for weeks or months sucking through a straw. So that's what's put us off the traditional open face helmet. And to us, if you want an open face helmet, this is the best option. It's the X0, as I've mentioned. And it's basically an open face helmet with a chin bar. This is technically the JO. So Shui's JO is their proper open face helmet, but this is the same helmet, the same cam tail at the back, the same drop down visor, but all they've done is grafted on a chin bar. And what that means is that if you were to have an accident, you are going to maintain your chin as it were. 
As a helmet, it's going to flow almost as much air as a traditional jet helmet. Clearly, you're going to lose a little bit of airflow here across the front of the face, but you're still going to get that wind in your head a feeling. But as I've said, if it all goes wrong, if you end up parting company with the bike, then you're going to hold on to your chin. The X0 has, as I mentioned already, it's got a little drop down sun visor. As a helmet, it's like any Shui, we can change all the headliners and the cheek pads for a perfect fit. We think it's a fantastic helmet. And even though technically some might say it's not an open face helmet, when anyone comes in to see us and says, I want an open face, we are going to do our damnedest to try to persuade them to take this rather than a traditional open face. A proper adventure suit has a removable waterproof membrane or waterproof liner, both in the top half and the bottom half. A proper adventure suit does not have, whatever Klim might try to persuade you of, does not have a laminated membrane. And that's because if we are somewhere where we're really having an adventure, somewhere hot, or if we're working hard off-road, the last thing you want near your body or near your skin is a membrane. And that's because the membrane is going to make it difficult for the cooler to reach you and it's going to make it harder to sweat. It's a form of construction that's particularly popular in Southern Europe for those same reasons. It's hotter there than it is here. And when it's hot, you take the membrane out so the air can reach you and we can breathe. It's not, however, a form of construction that's anywhere near as popular here in the UK. And that's because it's the least waterproof solution of the three main forms of construction. Those three main forms are lamination, drop liner, and this is the third one, removable. And that's because when it rains, the rain can seep through the zips because it doesn't have seam sealed the seams are not sealed, so water can get through. So if you are commuting through a British winter, this is not the kind of outfit you want. So the removable membrane in a suit, in a jacket, in a pant is not for everyone. But for some people, it is going to be the best solution, depending on the kind of riding you do. The Held Corsa, sorry, the Held Carrizo, Carrizo Evo and the matching Torno pant are the best we've come across of this genre, as it were. It's expensive. It's an expensive bit of kit, so it's not the most popular even here at Moto Legends. We have other suits that purport to do the same thing that are more popular and are less expensive. But if you want the best, this is a simply fantastic bit of kit. We've got huge venting across both the top and bottom halves. Here on the jacket, we've got these large vents here. We've got vents that run all the way down through the arms. We've got vents across the back vents behind the shoulders. So it's a really well vented jacket. We've got super fabric here on the shoulders, on the elbows, on the knees. Super fabric is about the most abrasion resistant material that you can use on motorcycle clothing. So it's a very safe suit as well. And the jacket and pants come with a full suite of D3O armor. Pleasingly for us, because it means that we can fit a wider number of people into this suit, it comes in a huge array of sizes, including long, jackets, short jackets, stout jackets, long legs, short legs, and stout pants. So we can fit a lot of people into this outfit. The quality in terms of the construction and the detailing is, puts it in a different league, we think, to any other removable membrane suit on the market. But there's one other aspect of the waterproofing of this jacket that is worthy of note. The membrane that attaches to the inside of the jacket is made by Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex, as most people would accept, is the best membrane, but the membrane contains stretch. So you can actually wear it on the inside if you want, but if it's really raining hard, you can wear it on the outside. And that's gonna give you a level of waterproofing that is better than lamination. All of which makes this, in our view, the ultimate expression of an adventure suit. You will, without doubt, find cheaper, but whatever you pay, you won't find better. Our favorite adventure helmet is the Klim Krios Pro. Now that may surprise some people because in some of our reviews we've been a little bit disparaging about it, but hear me out because there's a bit of an angle on this. Now at just 1,250 grams, this is one of the lightest helmets you'll ever wear. In fact, I think it's about the same weight as Valentino Ross's race helmet. And the fact that it's so light can be attributed to two factors. First, it's got a carbon shell. We're not massively keen on carbon shells. They don't do anything that a composite shell doesn't. They're just lighter. But the other element that makes this helmet so light is that instead of an EPS, which is the 
part within a helmet, the thick white bit within a helmet that absorbs energy. Instead of an EPS, this helmet has a form of construction made of hollow tubes, it's called choroid, and it absorb, absorbs more energy than EPS, than an EPS, does it in a more uniform way, works in hot and cold exactly the same, but it's incredibly light. And indeed, it is this stuff that probably explains why the Krios Pro has had such an easy transformation from the old 2200 standard to the new 2206 standard. And indeed, the new helmet obviously is 2206. Helmet comes with an expensive photochromatic visor in the box. Now, I say expensive, when you buy a photochromatic visor for a Shui helmet, you could be paying two, three hundred pounds even. So this has one in the box. It doesn't have a drop down peak because uh, it doesn't have a drop down sun visor. A lot of off-road helmets, a lot of adventure helmets don't have one, but it's useful to have this in the absence of a drop-down sun visor. You've also got a very clever system here. It's known as Fidlock, Fidlock, and basically it's a very easy way of fastening the helmet. You just introduce this to the helmet and it automatically locks in place. The helmet can be worn with or without a peak. Obviously, you can wear it with goggles. You can just take the visor off and you can wear it with goggles. But whilst this is a, an absolutely brilliant helmet in our view for trail riding, for proper adventure riding, for proper off-road riding, we do not think that it's the best choice for riding on road. And that has been our problem with this helmet because what happens is that many people go out and get themselves a big adventure bike, a GS, they've got knobbly tires, they've got panniers, they've got spotlights on the front, and they then go out and buy themselves what they think is an appropriate helmet. Now, most of those helmets, as it's got to be said, are really just road touring helmets with a peak on. This is an, a proper adventure helmet. But the problem with it is that with the combination of the choroid and the carbon, it doesn't absorb noise very well. So if you try to wear one of these helmets on the road, I think you're just going to find it unbearably noisy. The helmet does take a, it does have a facility to fit a comms, but our experience with this helmet is that anyone who's tried to put a comms in it, you just cannot hear it. It is a fantastic helmet. It's a lovely trick bit of kit. There's nothing quite like it out there, but do not buy it if noise is an issue for, for you. Make sure if you're going to buy one of these that you know exactly what you're in for. Laminated suits are very much in vogue right now. Just about every manufacturer does one, some clearly better than others. But the truth is that laminated gear is probably only better for a very small percentage of the population. The first group are those who commute perhaps more than an hour or so each way into work. Because if you commute for an hour and it rains all the way, your suit's gonna get wet, your jacket, your pants are gonna get wet, but a laminated garment will dry out pretty quickly. So when it goes to coming home in the evening, you'll have a perfectly dry suit. The other group who will benefit from lamination are those who find themselves fairly frequently in three or four or more hours of rain because a laminated jacket won't wet out, it won't become soaking wet and heavy with the rain in the way that a drop liner jacket will. But for the rest of us, then a drop liner jacket is probably more sensible for a number of reasons. Anyway, the best laminated suit on the market I think is this one. It's the Stadler Supervent 3 jacket matched with the Stadler 4 All, 4 All Pro pants. The Chassis is a Gore-Tex three-layer pro shock, and it just doesn't get more waterproof than that. It comes with the best armor. The armor in this jacket, the back protector is like a surfboard. It's absolutely huge, and it exceeds the highest level two standard by up to 60%. So this is a massively protective jacket. You also get things like super fabric. This, that's this material here that's made from ceramic balls. You get that on the shoulders, on the elbows, and on, on the knees. That's the most abrasion-resistant material you can use on motorcycle clothing. And Rucker, for example, used to use it, but it just became too expensive. Jacket is better vented than any Rucker jacket you'll ever find. Perhaps even better vented than most Klim jackets. You've got these large vents here on the chest. You've got exhaust vents, large exhaust vents on the back. But interestingly, there's an internal system of uncrushable 3D piping that forces the air around the body because otherwise what can happen is air comes into the vents on most jackets and goes nowhere, but in this jacket, it's forced around the body. It's the best made jacket out there with one exception, and that is these poppers. It is incredibly frustrating, but the only thing that ever goes wrong with, them, with one of these jackets is these poppers can come off. We've made noises about it, but it still seems to be an ongoing issue. It's something that they don't seem to be able to solve all that easily. Nonetheless, it's a fantastic outfit comes in a huge range of sizes. So in jackets, you've got long jackets, short jackets, trousers, you've got long legs, extra long legs, short legs, extra short legs. And if 
you can't find anything even then, then we can have this suit made for you to a bespoke size. In terms of the warranty that backs up the quality of construction, you get a 10 year warranty with this suit. If you have a crash in it, we can send this suit back to Germany and they can do repairs to the suit in a way that you can't with any other suit that I know. The jacket, it has to be said, is not the most comfortable, and that's partly because of the super fabric and the super strong armor, but it's probably the most reassuring jacket you can wear, and it does over time, I can assure you, it molds to the body. So whilst it doesn't start out particularly comfortable, it does over a period of time. By contrast, the pants, which are the four all pro pants, are just about the most comfortable motorcycle trousers you will ever wear. Every single German police force wears a version of this outfit, wears something from Stadler. It's a favorite here with our high mileage riders. And what I can tell you is that nobody who buys a Stadler ever regrets it. Historically for motorcyclists, waterproofs have often been considered a bit of an afterthought. They're kind of a commodity, something that you pick up anywhere when you thought you might be about to get caught out in the rain. And that's because we took the view that all waterproofs did pretty much the same job. They were all much of a muchness. Well, we thought the same here at Moto Legends until we discovered the Scott Ergo Pros, and these are our favorite waterproofs. The suit comes as a two-piece, yellow top, black bottom, or black top with a black bottom. You can buy them individually, by the way. We prefer a two-piece because they're easier to put on, and there are circumstances where we don't need a waterproof over our bottom halves. Our legs tend to stay a little bit drier than our top halves because they might be protected by a fairing, you've got the heat of the engine and so on. And at times the important thing is keeping the core warm, the core dry, and at times therefore all we want to do is put a jacket on. In terms of construction, they're made with a polyamide material to which is laminated a waterproof breathable membrane. They are therefore as a result totally waterproof but highly breathable. In fact, if you put this jacket on when you're already wet, you will find that by the time you reach your destination, what you're wearing underneath it will have dried out completely. They are super stretchy, so they are incredibly comfortable to wear. But because of the stretch, we tend to go one size down to prevent them flapping in the wind. So we wear them quite tight. So for example, if you're a medium in a jacket, you might go down to a, a small in the jacket, same, same with the pants. If you're large, you go down to a medium. If you wear this over something that is not waterproof, a mesh jacket or anything really, you are going to stay 100% dry. You can also, of course, use something like this to wear over a waterproof jacket when it's really cold because it's going to be a second waterproof membrane and the second waterproof membrane, which acts as a windproof membrane as well, is going to keep you much warmer. Since we discovered the Scots, we've delisted, we have delisted all of our other waterproofs. We just don't have the heart to offer something inferior to our customers. We don't think that anything comes close to this. Now, the top and bottom together, I think the top is 85 pounds, the bottom is 75 pounds, so that's 150 in total. It is not, I'm sure, or these are not the cheapest waterproofs on the market, but the truth is that our customers love them. We've sold absolutely zillions, I think, anyone is going to find that these are a great investment. I hope you enjoyed hearing about 12 of our favorite products. As I've said, for our next video, we'll be looking at another 12. If you want to learn more about any of these products, obviously you can visit the website. Now, when you find the products on the website, you can check out the spec in a little bit more detail. You can check availability. And obviously, if you want to buy any one of these products, you can do that there and then. When you buy from us, we try to make the process as simple, straightforward, and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item of protected wear that you buy from us. Returns are totally free, and what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. We have the best price promise in the business. Now, John Lewis was rightly famed for its never knowingly under sold price promise, but we actually go one stage better. If you can find anybody selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that competitor's price by a full 10%. Now, there are a few terms and conditions associated with what we call our price beat, nothing particularly onerous, but if you are going to price beat us, we suggest you go over to the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. If in the future you'd like to see bulletins promise about new products, then if you go to the website, at the top of every page there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up, click on there, within seconds you'll be in business, in future you'll receive our email bulletins. If, however, you prefer to get your information video graphically, that is to say in this form, we'd be simply delighted if you wanted to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below.
Finally, I'd like to make mention of our fabulous little shop here at Moto Legends. We're based about a mile from the centre of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. And as I've suggested, it's a small shop, we have a small footprint, but it's attached to our warehouse where we have these days more than three million pounds of stock arranged over three floors. Technically, that makes us the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we like to think that we are far more than just the amount of merchandise we have here in the building. We're all about service, we're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five-star ranking in the business. When you come to see us, we'll serve you only the finest Italian Illy coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And if you're lucky, you might even get to sample one of our delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.